हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल केमिकल अड्डा प्लीज वॉच दिस वीडियो टिल दी एंड टू लर्न अबाउट द क्रिटिकल टिकनेस ऑफ इंस्यूलेशन और क्रिटिकल रेडियस ऑफ इंस्यूलेशन एंड लेट्स डिराइव द फॉर्म्यूला फॉर डिटर्मिनिंग द क्रिटिकल रेडियस ऑफ इंस्यूलेशन सो फर्स्ट वी विल बिगिन बाई स्टडिंग वॉट इज द क्रिटिकल टिकनेस ऑफ इंस्यूलेशन और क्रिटिकल रेडियस ऑफ इंस्यूलेशन एंड वाई इट इज नेसेसरी टू नो अबाउट इट so the thickness up to which heat flow increases and after which heat flow decreases is termed critical thickness hence critical thickness is defined as the thickness at which heat flow increases and then decreases then in the case of cylinder and sphere it is called the critical radius of insulation or we can say that the critical thickness of insulation is the outer radius of insulation where the rate of heat flow is maximum It depends upon the thermal conductivity of an insulating material and the heat transfer coefficient at the outer surface of the insulation. Then, the addition of insulation thereafter will reduce the heat loss from the pipe. Hence, as we all know, at the critical thickness of insulation, the rate of heat flow is maximum, and if we add more insulation after critical thickness, the insulation no longer effectively improves thermal resistance. and the insulation could actually become less effective however why does this occur and why is it important to know the critical thickness or critical radius of insulation hence there are a few reasons why this occurs first reason is due to heat conduction and heat transfer by convection or radiation from the exterior surface insulation beyond this thickness may be less efficient So once the insulation reaches a certain thickness it may start to lose its effectiveness because of the combined impact of heat conduction through the insulation and heat transfer through convection or radiation from the exterior surface Then the second reason is after the critical thickness further insulation can decrease efficiency by increasing heat transfer surface area Hence the overall efficiency may be reduced by the addition of additional insulation after the critical thickness is reached as it increases the surface area through which heat can be transferred The third reason is that understanding the critical thickness is beneficial for making cost effective decisions So when insulation is applied beyond the critical thickness more material costs and installation labor are required which may not result in similarly significant benefits in terms of energy savings then the next is knowing critical thickness helps design insulation that reduces heat loss without overspending then the next is it prevents over insulation which can trap moisture or become a thermal conductor so it prevents the potential issue of excessive insulation where the insulation may trap moisture or act as a heat conductor due to being too thick so for better operation we should know the critical thickness of insulation therefore let us formulate the equation for the critical thickness of insulation let's consider a long pipe that is carrying steam at a temperature of t and has a thermal conductivity of k1 This pipe has two radii an inner radius denoted as R1 and an outer radius denoted as R2 Take HI as the heat transfer coefficient at the inner surface The object is completely covered with an insulating material that has a thermal conductivity of K2 extending to a distance of R3 from its center Then take HO as the heat transfer coefficient at the radius R3 The external surface is in direct contact with the surrounding convective environment also known as the ambient at a temperature of TO. Hence the equation that describes the rate of heat transfer through this insulated pipe is Q is equal to 2 pi L Ti minus TO divided by the summation of thermal resistance. The overall resistance to heat loss from the hot fluid to the atmosphere is made up of four resistances in series. So first resistance is the resistance offered by the steam or inner surface is equal to 1 by R1 HI. Second resistance is 
Thermal resistance offered by the pipe wall, which is equal to ln R2 by R1 divided by K1. Then third resistance is Thermal resistance offered by the insulation, which is equal to ln R3 by R2 divided by K2. Last one that is fourth resistance is the resistance offered by air or the surrounding convective environment of the pipe is equal to 1 by R3HO. Hence equation 1 becomes Q is equal to 2 pi L Ti minus TO divided by 1 by R1HI plus ln R2 by R1 divided by K1 plus ln R3 by R2 divided by K2 plus 1 divided by R3HO. But, using the above rate of heat transfer equation, when the variable Q, that is the rate of heat transfer, is plotted as a function of R3, while keeping the other parameters constant, it will reach a maximum point at a specific value of R3. This value of R3, at which the rate of heat transfer that is Q is maximum, is called as the critical thickness, or critical radius of insulation. Let's use this concept, to calculate the critical thickness. For that, we should differentiate equation 2 with respect to R3, keeping other parameters constant, and then equating to 0. Hence let's rearrange the term of equation 2, we get. Where the denominator is equal to, the summation of R, which is nothing but overall resistance offered by insulated pipe. Hence we can write, the summation of R is equal to, 1 by 2 pi L, into 1 by R1 HI, plus, ln R2 by R1 divided by K1 plus, ln R3 by R2 divided by K2 plus, 1 divided by R3 HO. So to find the equation of critical thickness, we can differentiate equation 3, with respect to R3, and keep all other parameters constant. But, let's minimize the denominator of equation 3, as the numerator of this equation can be held constant, because, the numerator consists of, Ti and To, which are constant, because it doesn't depend upon the thickness of the insulation. Hence, as we have, the summation of R is equal to. Now let's differentiate the summation of R, with respect to R3 we get. As we can see, the first term, that is 1 by R1 Hi is constant, and R1 Hi do not depend on R3. Hence, we can take, the derivative of the first term as 0. Then for the second term. The second term consists R2, R1, and K1, and none of these three parameters are dependent on R3, hence we can take, the derivative of the second term as 0. Then, about the third term. As it consists of R3, let's apply the division rule of ln. Hence, third term can be written as, d by dr3 of, ln R3 by K2, minus, d by dr3 of, ln R2 by K2. Now about the fourth term. So as the fourth term consists R3. Hence fourth term can be written as, 1 by HO, into, d by dr1 by R3. After solving this equation, we get d by dr3 of summation of r is equal to 1 by 2 pi l into in bracket 0 plus derivative of third term is 1 by k2 into 1 by r3 minus derivative of fourth term is 0 plus 1 by h o into derivative of the fifth term is minus 1 by r3 square. Hence we get the final equation as d by dr3 of summation of r is equal to 1 by 2 pi l in bracket 1 by k2 r3 minus 1 by minus h o r3 square. After rearranging the term we get. Now let's equate the above equation to 0 we get. After solving the equation we get. After rearranging the term, we get. Hence, we get R3 is equal to K2 divided by HO. 
This equation can be written as R3 equal to RC is equal to K2 divided by HO when the heat loss is a maximum which can be written as RC is equal to K divided by H when the heat loss is a maximum where K is nothing but K2 which is thermal conductivity of insulating material and H is HO which is convective heat transfer coefficient at the outer surface of insulation Hence we get an equation for the critical radius of insulation or critical thickness of insulation as RC is equal to K divided by H when the heat loss is a maximum. So that's all about the of critical thickness of insulation. So keep watching. In the next video, we will discuss another topic. So, if you like my video, please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel which is chemical adda